all set for another adventure. Welcome back guys. Um, I'm heading off for four or five days. I've uh, taken a bit of time off work. I've got a pretty dark and gloomy day that's come in. It's um, forecast to be really cold. They're saying, for Bureau saying down to negative three every night where I'm heading. So uh, I've packed on the winter woolies and um, I'm heading out there more by myself this time, but um, always in good companies. I'm taking all you guys with me. So. We'll see what turns up. I, I, the track I'm going, I, I spotted this place a couple of months ago. Um, I was really high up on a range looking down on, over this spot. I could see some deer and some really nice um, feed and gullies down in this spot. So, been doing research, got onto a few good old maps and um, looks like I can get the car pretty close to where I need to be. And then I'm going to chuck the backpack on and, and set off and see what I can find. So, should be a good adventure. Stay tuned. Um, fingers crossed we find some critters. Leaves are turning, there's a chill in the air Campfires are burning, we're gathered round in chairs Three generations of hunting in our veins Talking about what might happen on opening day where the man's calling for southwest winds Gonna have to change my plans Guess I won't be hunting the power line I'm moving to the boat seat stand Sighted in my rifle And she sure is shooting straight But I'll meet up with the jitters, y'all It's opening day I've been working all summer And it's sure been hot Tractor tore up, but I planted my plot Deer trail running through there looks like a highway I got my heart set on that drop time book There's plenty of room in the back of my truck It's been a long year, but it's gonna be worth the wait It's open in Turned out to be an absolutely gorgeous day. Um, I saw some other hunters on the way in, which is interesting. Just when you think you've gone far enough away, eh? Hey? But um, saw a hind on the way in as well, which is good. And um, you can see the kind of country behind them. There's deer tracks all through this sand. It's nice and open, it's beautiful in here actually. So you never know what's going to pop up. Just had to straight out from the car. I've done a little river crossing. It looks like there's another one ahead. Pretty well worn game trail this one though. It's slippery. Very, very slippery. God. That's knee deep. Just uh, started a pretty big walk in so. About five hours now, five river crossings. A fair bit of elevation, it's kind of kind of going up and up and up, but I'm in a good spot now. There's a lot of action here, lots of broken sticks and rubs and preachers and wallows and um, it's it's two o'clock so it's not really deer o'clock. Um which is probably why I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen a wallaby, there's no sign of life at all, really. But it's um, dead still, it's absolutely beautiful weather, um, considering the forecast. Uh, so yeah, they got that wrong for sure. It's meant to be um, a top of 8, I reckon it's probably 15 at the moment. And uh, they send negative 3 tonight. But, uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to go and explore this system around. It's a pretty major river down here. We've been following a, a smaller one that's led me to this one. So I'll go and see what's around. Looks like a lot of deer are using the bank down below. I've uh, punched up on top of this ridge here, hopefully to get a good view and kind of learn the lay of the land. Uh, the trees are um, as open as it is, it only gives you glimpses of what's down below. I really want to focus on that, those flats along the river because that was where the most sign and the greenest feed was. But um, my theory is if I get up high, Somewhere I might be able to look down towards it. 
But uh, tell you what, the more I go, the harder it gets. It's certainly steeper up here. Jackpot, wicked view from up here. That's what I was hoping for. A nice pinch up on top, and I've got a panoramic view of everything below me, including the river. So, this is me for the Arvo. I'm going to sit here as long as I can, and um, I can already see a lot of prints. You're seeing it as I'm seeing it, and um, there's game trails all over that riverbank down there. So, this is me. I'm going to hang on here as long as I can for light. Um, but I've got a really long walk out, so I can't stay for too long. It's taken me a little while, but I found a deer. It's asleep. So middle of the screen, there's a sandy patch, and there's like a Christmas kind of tree. It's a an arrow, if you like. The top of the top of the um, Christmas tree, right on the edge of that grass, a fraction to the left. There's a bedded deer. And I'll just zoom out, have a look at where it's sleeping. Right in the middle of the bloody river. That's unreal. Hopefully you can make it out on the screen there, but you can see the prince going straight to it too. I can't see any others with her. But um it's a good lure for a stag, it's a little bit far to shoot from here, but good to just see if something walks out. What a spot, eh? That's bloody sensational. Deer's not moving. Like I said, even if a stag walked out on that, it's way too far for me to do anything about it at this time of day. But, just want to see what's about. There, I've got to be in here somewhere. Some really fresh um, prints where the deer are crossed here. I just got honked at, so there must have been one over there I didn't see as I've approached this crossing. It took off, it's, um, I'm pretty sure it was a hind going by these prints and um, it sounded like a kind of a squeaky kind of honk. Where did she go? I well, made it back to the car. It's been an interesting day. I love going and seeing new new places and um did see quite a few deer in the end. Little fleeting glimpses of them, um, all pretty far away though. A lot of horses in here as well. Um, looks like a fair bit of fallow sign, which I didn't expect, which is good to know. Um, I saw a really monster stag, he's an absolute brute. Um, it's August now, and uh, he was cast. <laughs> I pulled the rifle up on him pretty quick, he was pretty close to me, and uh, soon looked at the other guy. It was either cast or he's regressed, and there was just little knobs that. Yeah, this is very unusual, but he was an absolute tank of a, of a beast, that one. Now, I'll we'll have a cook up here. I'll spend the night with the car. It's meant to be, um, it's getting cold now, actually. They said negative three, which is really cold. I don't know if we'll get that cold in here, but um, it's certainly plummeting right now. I'll get up early in the morning, and there's some really big kicking up faces here. And I'm thinking if it's going to be that cold, if I was a deer, I'd be want to be up on those faces getting that early morning sun. So I'm going to sit on the cold side and glass across to the sunny side and we'll see, hopefully, we'll pick up some animals moving up off the bottom here and heading up to chase some of that sun. Uh, fingers crossed, tomorrow's a new day. Uh, I've got a few more days up here, we'll see what happens. Oh, it's early morning. I just bumped the bloody stag and he's ran off hard. Almost pulled the trigger, I had him in my sight, so I was just getting to the shooting light. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll just wait, he's not going anywhere. And then he just sensed something was up. Had the wind right, there's no way he could have seen me, I don't know why, it was spooked him, but try and walk him up but uh, he was on a hard run so I don't like my chances. I've got a stag bedded just up here. The track's lead, I think it's him, I'm not sure. That got my boots on. I'm gonna leave all my stuff here. I'll take my main camera with me. He's up there only about 150 meters. It's very odd because he was running so hard just here. Maybe he stood there for a while. It's taken me about 40 minutes to come over, but I'll see if I can get a shot. I can't see any headgear at this moment. 
moment, so it's quite a big bodied animal though, so I know it's a stag. Oh, fingers crossed, he doesn't see me pop my head over this little ridge here. Wish me luck. They've been really pouring it up around here. Look at this. They just bed it up. Yeah, I reckon that might have been the one I saw this morning. Yep. He's an old deer, I reckon. Oh, that basically kind of, I'm just going to give him a bit of time to expire. I think he's still a bit of nerves, maybe there. You just got to be careful when you're coming up to deer like this. Like he could still well and truly be alive, but his belly's not rising anymore. Especially when you're down by yourself, like. If one of these got up and got you, you'd be in some trouble. Oh, exactly what I was talking about. Oh, mm, might be just nerves. Put a tree between you and it just in case. Yeah, he hasn't blinked yet. Pretty sure it's just nerves. So, stag down, bring all my kit back up and I'll give you a closer look at him. It's really, um, it was a cool stalk, from getting busted in the, in the in early, just on light. Can't believe that he saw me there, clever old boy. And then he's done a gallop, full gallop across there, I've tracked him for maybe, look at the GPS, it's about 400, about 380. And, um... I'm lucky to have seen him because there's just a small little gap there where his ham stood out and I originally thought it was a hind standing just over the crest and then I pulled the binos out and I realised it's a better deer but I didn't think it would be him, I thought he must have ran past but he must have just used up all his energy and had a little grandpa nap there <laughs> it's um, yeah, especially in the open here there just must be no pressure I can't believe after pushing him that he just sat there in the open like that it's normally they'll scrub up that was a really cool stalk, and um, still really early. It's only it's 7:30 now, so the real work begins. Get all this guy into the backpack. I might um, decide whether I do multiple trips with legs and bone, or um, or bone him out here. It's pretty. It's nice and cool. Didn't get down to negative three last night. It was about I think it was about zero or just neg one. Doesn't feel cold now though, I suppose I've got a bit of a bit of adrenaline going. I'll take you up there and have a look at him, eh? Oh, well, here he is. Old Bush Harley. <laughs> wow. What a cool head. I haven't got myself a uh, a handlebar deer like that. This is um, so cool. I chased one. I um, back towards home for many years and ended up getting spotlighted. I just think that's so unique. It's cool as. That little stubby brows. He's got these weird little bits coming out here. I think these might even be his, his inners maybe. And his tops have regressed. And he's um he's pretty stinky. He hasn't got much mud on him and there is I found an active wallow. 
So this isn't the, um, this is obviously just the old guy just dying of old age out here, eh? <laughs> oh god, what a great little stalk in the morning. You've been fighting too. Here's our old sag. There's one cool handlebar. There's that. He got scrapes and sores all over him. All the way down here. Big lump of a body. He's a uh he's definitely he's probably evaded a few hunters in his time. There it's just grown out, no inners at all. Oh man, I don't know how he's going to eat, <laughs> he's going to be the old one, I might just take, give you our back straps and eye fillets I think, he might be a bit grizzly, maybe for me dog, it's a long walk out of here either way, I'll take as much as I can, the capes are me no good. Start the hard work, I'll get this one back to my kit and um, have a cook up and still room for a Another stalk this afternoon. Never know what's ahead, eh? It's nice and cool still and quite early in the morning so I decided to head back to camp for some brekkie and unload some of the heavier gear that was in my pack. Deer's a long way off but they're here. I just come back to where I first bumped that stag at first light to see what he was doing because he was kind of, as I come around the corner, he was mulling around here and I was waiting for him for it to become shooting light and um, it's the only bit I found but it's all, he was on the thistle here, see all that, all that thistle and he was just mulling around this little patch here eating that, it's the only thistle I've actually seen. Oh, sorry, uh, not not thistle. It's um, stinging nettle. It's um, I haven't really noticed it, but it's just around this group of trees here, and everywhere else I've been, so it must be the sweet stuff the old boy it was all in his mouth. The old boy liked that, eh? That's where the um, stinging nettle was, and I've just walked a couple more meters and found. He's had a good scrape here. Uh, I see um, just raking up the ground here. There's his footprints, and he's walked over that way. And that's where I spotted him. I was actually, I'd just come over this rise here, I just poked my head over that rise and I spotted him. Well, the sun's well and truly up now. I made it back to camp and um, Got all my knives and supplies, so yeah, yeah work begins. It's pretty fortunate um, I was able to get the car about 1,200 metres from here, so it's not too big a carry out. Um, I've got all day now, so I'll just take my time and go back and forth. So I'll try and get as much as I can of him out, I think. Ready for trip number one. Got the back straps, front leg on my backpack. I'm gonna put this big heavy bugger on my shoulder. 1200. Let's do it. Trip number two. Big bag bag. Getting the sweat up now. 
Oh. Easy. Oh, oh, oh. Last trip. I'm getting knackered now. Um, I've come back with my pack because I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this front leg because his neck shot has no spoilage on it. This front. I've got a saw in my pack, and I'm just gonna dock it rather than carry that whole head out. It'll save a lot of weight. So, uh, it's getting on just past midday now. Made a fair effort in the morning, which is good. Time to go back and have a cook up and a coffee. Almost there. I'll give you a little look at this saw that I got. It's pretty good. There's lots of different ones out in the market. This one's quite big, but I find a lot of those, um, those saws, those little bone saws, on a sandbar, because their head's quite wide and the blade's only kind of yay long you gotta you don't get much um, purchase on it you've got to kind of go backwards and forwards only an inch and um, it just takes forever so this one here is made by Eka and it it's a good shape in your pack because it sits it's never in the way it's um it's actually got three saw blades in it so you've got a like a bush saw and um, more importantly this um this one is the bone saw, and it's not a multi-angled um, tooth. It's just one straight set of teeth, so it doesn't clog up on all the sinew like the, a lot of the other ones do, I find. So, yeah, I really like this saw. It's, um, it's such a long blade that you can actually get, like, a full saw as you go. So, yeah, if you're looking for a, um, a good little pack saw, I know it is a little bit big and cumbersome, but if you plan on success, this is... Um, this will save you a little bit of weight on the way in. It'll save you a lot of, lot of weight on the way out, that's for sure. All set for the last trip out. You're beauty. this it's so bloody peaceful here it's the top spot I've just moved camp I'll come um, a bit further down the track and um, there's two whole new systems there's a, quite a big one behind me and a really big one up on the other side that caught my eye which looks really nice so I want to have a bit of a rest back here for a while it's already you know, it is Zero o'clock now. Really, I've got to go. Um, I'll we'll go for a little walk. I won't go far this afternoon. I'll save my energy because tomorrow I really want to go for a big mission up into one of these systems, depending on the wind. And I think it'll be well worth it. Um, but yeah, for now, this is a great little camp spot. There's just a creek down there too, so fresh drinking water, not too far away, maybe 150 meters. Cheers, guys. I've been using that um, Talaric sling hook, uh, my other pack yesterday. It works quite well, and I thought I'd try these um, things. These are the muzzle covers from Talaric. They're really good for a um, if you've got a ported barrel. Like this came with a muzzle brake, with the, it's all ported. It fouled up a lot, and I took it off because of the noise, really. But um, they make these things called muzzle covers. So I know a lot of guys use tape and stuff like that, but sometimes you forget your tape and. Um, this is kind of a an alternative to that. The big advantage of this is you get a lot of laughs around camp about your new finger dingers. Blaze orange too, with extra ribs. <laughs> no, but seriously, the real advantage is that it's um it's blaze orange. So when that's up on your shoulder, you really don't look like an antler tip anymore, do you? Yeah, something different anyway. Well, I was contemplating having a rest maybe by camp this afternoon, but it's just perfect. Got a little bit of a breeze, 
so it's good, I know which way it's going to come from and keep it in my face now so I'm going to head out into the new gully see what's up there and recce some spots for uh, glassing tomorrow see what we come up with how's this for a little gem of a spot it's kind of like the Wanangatta without all the people. Got to get across another river. <laughs> but that's a great little feeding spot over there. There's just blackberries and clover. Big systems coming down. It just screams deer. Even up into this stuff, like stags love that bony, rocky kind of stuff up there. So that could be a really good spot to concentrate on in the morning. So I've only punched up probably a quarter of the way and I've already been rewarded with a lot of really good glassing country here. That's straight above that feeding system so I have no doubt there's going to be animals up on those faces, especially those screeds and stuff in the morning. I reckon that's where it's going to be at so as they're coming up off that feed, I might be able to see them. I have a quick glass here and there as I go up, just in case there's one sun baking. But I reckon it needs another hour or so, just as the light gets off that before they'll get up and move. How's this for game trails? They're so well worn every, probably 10 meters or so. So it might pay for me to actually be on that side, looking at this side. I'm going to see if I, whatever animals I see that are holding, I'm going to switch sides in the morning. Because this is pretty red hot. Just got amazing views off here. And it's so steep that I can see all the way into the bottom. Into all those feeders there. There's game trails every 10 metres. I can even see all the way up above me it's that steep. So this is a great little great little face to work actually this place just keeps swimming it up it's a whole another aspect it's full of green pick all the way up and above me just popped over what I thought was the, the peak and it's a false summit the back of that gully looks money to me straight down to the river below it's nice and quiet in here might stick along this pinch here. See if I can look into the back corner of this. It's so open, I'm kind of focusing, looking for the... My gut tells me they'll be in these um, thicker areas, the amber beans amber. I threw a span in the works for that old boy just sitting in the open, maybe there's no pressure. Behaviour's a little bit different. It's a red hot game trail, this one. Old sign, new sign. I like it. sign they're on the move. She's coming out of there somewhere. I'll keep an eye on her because she's a perfect lure. She appears to be by herself. It's quite a big hind so oh god I reckon I'll um I'm gonna sit tight here. It's, um, it's definitely shootable range too. 215 meters to where that deer is. My wind is swirling quite a fair bit here. Um, I don't know if she'd get me that far out, but it's going straight up into there, which I don't like. Well, if there's a stag with her, I cannot see it. I suspect if the wind's the same over there, it'd be just above her, or trailing on the same trail. She could be making a route right around that corner there. Maybe he's on that next face. She might have come around here if we're out of the wind to just have a little quiet space. Uh, 
only got an hour left of light. It's pretty cool how they just two steps totally disappear. Definitely not smelt me. He's going around, so maybe her path down to the water is on the other side. I'm on a really good game trail here. I'm wondering if the same thing occurs on that little spine in front of her. Maybe she's going to go down that one. The water's down there. Look how nice and open it is. Is exactly what I thought. I just saw a stag pick her up. He was on the on the top of that face. She's walked underneath him, and then she's gone up, and they're standing together. Just walked over that crest now, so I haven't got long. I'm going to get around as fast as I can. I need to get up as well to get above him. It's go time. Even though the race is on the final deer, you ought to just take a breath. Of Take all that in, look at that. That's the other big system I was saying. I want to go and explore. There'd be deer in those hills. That one, that's a backpacking adventure up in there, I tell you. Alright, I've got my elevation. I'm going to start trying to head them off. I can't afford to be too quiet, I'm just going to have to go. Looks like they're going that way anyway. I've got a couple of rollers to get around. I've only got about 40 minutes to do it. It's going to be tight. Just push the group of deer downwards, damn it. Unfortunately, coming to this pinch looks perfect habitat. That was the group of deer have just gone smashing down there. Well, I think I mucked that one up on where I last saw that deer hook up with that stag. And they went this way, so... I've been going for two hours. I've only got about 20 minutes of light left, so I'm definitely going to be walking back in the dark. It's getting a bit sketchy, so I'm going to swing it back around and head back for some tucker. So I'm on my way back to camp. This is where all those deer were. It's weird, maybe they're on the move, but you can see they're uh, all ran barreled. Looks like there was three animals. They've gone crashing down. Crashing down. Hell there. Bugger. Just around the corner from where they busted out. You can see all that's been all. So it was some newer stuff there, some older stuff right next to where all the beds are, so I think I cocked that one up. I should have sat back on that ridge and kept watching for more. I reckon that was a different stag to the one that was with these girls. But I didn't get eyes on him. Just bumped another deer. Taken off. Moving too fast to get back before dark. Wait, oh, I should have gone slower. So it looks like it's a smaller print, must have been a hind. She's off. Now, is this for a little oasis down by the river? It's just so green. It's like where that deer was heading for sure. How good is this? The deer have just been absolutely all over this area. See, I can actually get up onto that spur and look down onto it all, so I've marked this spot for another time. Some big prints in there. Hmm. Well, we made it back to camp. Back at the car again tonight, so living like luxury. It's best when you've got cooking with gas. It's lightweight food, that's for sure. Still a couple of burgers. I've hung my venison up for tomorrow. 
it's gonna be great. Might do. I've never had a fire yet, so tomorrow I might get a fire going in the afternoon and um, cook up some of that backstrap. So the plan is, temperatures plummeted a lot. It's gonna be a really cold one tonight, I reckon. So the plan is head back in virtually the same thing as what I did this afternoon. Um, I'm gonna get up early and get into it early and hopefully um, I did bump a lot of deer out of that side. So um, I don't really expect them to be back in it. They might because, you know, I don't know if they smelt me or they just heard me coming. But um, I still want to focus on that side that's going to get the sun in the morning. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty good going. It was steep, but the game trails did make it fairly easy. You're on a contour the whole time. So those hard boots really come into their own over there. But there's no way I'd want to do that with a soft a soft sided shoe um, <clears throat> it was a relief to turn around and head back the other way that's for sure one angle the whole time so I really learned a lot on that little adventure um, the lay of the land where the deer were bedded before they come out in the afternoon I've made a lot of um, marks on the GPS of vantage point spot for looking at in the future so when those deer settle back down and I'll definitely come back into this spot just magic up in there and a couple of good spots to hang the hammock and stay there till last night which might be the better option rather than trying to race back to here be on those steep faces with my hammock um, that would be just gold because then you weren't, you were not going to be in a hurry to bail out so um, yeah I might, um, might plan another adventure back soon I think Good morning, day three. It's uh, just on 4.30. I'm gonna make an early start. And uh, get up that hill. I, um, I marked a lot of that trail, so I'm gonna stick the headlight on and try and get up as high as I can for sunrise into some of those spots that had a really good view. So, uh, it's a new day, fingers crossed. Brings good things. It's really quiet out. See, it's, um, it's trying to snow at the moment. Little bits of white fluff. Don't uh, Be able to say what the wind's going to do at this stage. It's just getting light now. Birds are firing up. Yesterday on the way back is where I bumped that deer. So I was thinking last night I might work this riverbank first thing. It's good. Nice and quiet. I can stay on the game trails in here to see if I can pick up any deer that might have been down on that really green grass and having a, having a drink before they head up to their beds. So I might give it half an hour or so, stalk this, and then I'll find a spur and head up for a bit of glassing at first light. I just found some really fresh prints. They've come down to the, um, to the river here it's all nice and open along here too. There's lots of feed so it stinks like deer down here. Hopefully they're still feeding along this bank somewhere. I'll see if I can find some. A lot of sign around here. This is down on the river flats. It's um absolutely beautiful stalking along here. I've been on the river flat for most of the morning. And um, no action down there, but I did get a glimpse of a hind. Just broke the cover, so on the other side, it's starting to go up now. So I'm going to do the same thing before this thermal inversion. I'm going to start punching up this one on my side and keep looking back on that side. There's a bit of a pinch there and gone in behind that. Maybe that's where they've been up for the day. There's nothing up high for them. I can't imagine them going up too high. It's definitely the steeper side though, so I'm gonna go and get some elevation. I 
I just start to spot of this young stag. It's just at the base of that tree above that big stuff, giving it a rub. He's doing the same thing I'm doing. I saw him a couple of times. He won't break cover. If he comes up a little bit, he'll be in the open. This is the same gully that I got busted yesterday, so I reckon that's him. I reckon that's that hind I saw walk over. Um, walked straight out of that spot in reverse last night. You now she's heading back into the same bedding area. And that little stag is just up her butt. There he is. So that's what happened yesterday. They're definitely the two that I saw. It's good to see the up and comers coming through the next generation. <laughs> He's busy. See, this is the the face. It's quite open on the other side. These deer have come down from below and they're coming their way up. They're the two that I saw go around and the stag was bedded up on the top of the ridge and she came out of the pinch and met up with him yesterday afternoon. So they've probably spent the night down on that feeder and then they're coming back up. So I need to go around them so I'm going to go higher than them and pop over the top. Sensing her pretty hard. Well, I reckon if, uh, if he's on that girl there, if another stag was around, you can just see her top left now. She's just broken out of that little cover. And they're going to go straight into their beds. I'm actually going to head around that way. I'm not going to focus on those two, I'm just going to slip by them, but um, I'll go over into the next system and see what's around there. But they're doing the same as me. It's, um, what's the time now? It's only 8 o'clock, and they're already going up to their beds. Cool air still coming down the hill. And he's very, very cautious for a young stag. If he keeps it up like that, he'll do well. Seems pretty cagey, which is surprising. Maybe there is another stag around. That's why I love when the light's like this. It's so much easier to see deer when it's sunny. Whenever you get these overcast days, the flat light, just they just pop. Once you add sunlight into these areas and a heap of shadows get cast, it's a lot harder to see. Race for the summit time, the deer are winning. They're almost to the top. I still got a third to go. Four legs looks a lot easier. I think that hind is playing hard to get. She's just powering up that hill. Young stag. I don't know what's going on. He's zigzagging trying to find her. It's really cool to see it unfold. He's single and ready to mingle. Made it to the top. I haven't seen those deer in quite a while, so I reckon they might have sat down. I'm gonna have a breather up here. The thermal sun's just coming out now, the thermal's starting to swirl. I'm gonna wait till it's steady and then go across the top of them. Hopefully, you don't bump them. You never know what's gonna be in the next system. The next roller will be as far as I've been down into here. My cab. So I've come up. Was it now? It's 8.30, so I set off nearly at 5 o'clock. 
I've come up 400 metres in elevation. And uh, so far so good. It's good to see there's deer on this face. It's an amazing view. What a gorgeous spot. How's this for a stag bed? He's got his little preach there. Overlooking the galley. Sitting under that log. <laughs> That's probably the best stag bed with a view I've seen for a while. Rub trees all around. Solid game trails on this little saddle. So I've just seen a, um, a deer right on the very peak at skyline on that little gap there. I couldn't see, just saw the colour, so it could be a horse. I think it's a deer. I just saw the ginger colour. So I'm going to sight and yell it. And it's, um, it's 500 metres from me. It's up a little bit. Mark there. We'll see how we go. It's a great little saddle, this one. Breathe is getting sucked down to that side. For the moment, that's fine. So that's where I saw that animal somewhere, somewhere on that peak there. Problem is. I've got a, a spine left and right, so I've got to go straight at it. I can't get around. I'm just going to have to hope that I can be quiet and sneak up on it. If it is a deer, it's bedded. I don't like my chances. The fresh chew marks there. I'm on a really well-used game trail on the centre here. You can see a lot of sign. It's a prime spot for a deer to sit. So still today. Got really fresh prints here. Pretty sure there were horses that I saw, or a horse, because there's a lot of horse sign here. Really, really, really fresh droppings. And, uh, strangely, I'm pretty sure that's pig shit. Might even be the pig, but there's a lot of pig sign up here. The mountain boar, way, way up in here. That's interesting. I don't like piggies. Hopefully none of one of them runs out after me again. What an amazing view. I'll pop up over the top here and see what's down the other side. It's amazing how much countryside I can see with little animals on its game trails absolutely everywhere so they must be all bedded down. It's only kind of Midday at the moment. Need to sleep up here. Might bring a pack and a tent. We're here at deer o'clock, this is when the action had happened. I was just thinking to myself I could hear something. It sounded close, but it's actually those brumbies, they're so noisy. I'm probably 300 meters from them and I can hear the footfall. Any deer out? 
I'll see you for a bit, see what happens. You sit and watching these horses work through this thick, thick stuff here. This might work in my favour if they um if they spook a deer that might have been bedded in there. Be interesting to see if anything starts walking out the back of this. There's lots of spots in those little thickets that I can't see from here, so it's actually a pretty good thing they're pushing through there right now. They're so noisy, noisier than me anyway. Alright, just come midday now. Spent most of the morning just hawking some gullies and, and glassing these faces and just a lot of signs, really odd that there is more animals in here, but they may be just spread out a lot. It's um, probably time to start heading back to camp, I think. Or at least find a spot to sit in the afternoon closer to camp. How cool is this? The, um, the preach here. And the stags come along. Obviously his wallow has got a red, a red kind of uh, mud to it. And he's got it so high, up, it's way up there, so it must be right on his snout. And you can see he's laid here. See all that red stuff there, so he must have sat there, maybe he shook there. And then, um, just come and give this one a touch up. And then he's put his neck down and painted that with clay. I can't see the wall. There is a creek here, but it's not here. So a very, very red one too, which is odd. He must have had it absolutely caked on him because where he's put his head down to snap that, it's covered in red mud all through those blackberries. There's spatter all over that bark where he must have been driven off him. And then as you come along, he's gotten right down into those trees. <laughs> and it's all the muds all over them too. He's just been going to town. Found his wallow. What it was. This must have been it from a while ago because it's all settled. I would have loved to have seen this stag. This is a hundred meters away from that last one and it's still caked in clay. He <laughs> must be bright red. What a pisser. You're gonna look like an ant mound. Made it back to camp. Oh yeah. A nice cold drink. We'll just come back to camp for a bit of a rest and um, change out my clothes and I'll uh, have something to eat and I'll head back out for the afternoon. I was in a show, at a show in Melbourne recently and um, I met a, a fella called Sam. He's, um, he's into bushcraft and things like that and he manufactures um, uh, hammocks and he's got a bit of um, really cool lightweight gear and he, um, he gifted me one of these. So his company name's Elton Goods. Um, it's a it's a lightweight titanium grill, similar to the ones that we've been using in the past, but this one's titanium as opposed to the uh, as opposed to the other ones we've been using, which have got a Teflon coating. So thanks, Sam. We're going to give it a try, and if it um, if it works well, I might take it on my next backpacking adventure. I'm going to cook myself up a bit of prime venison backstrap. Should be delish. Steak. <laughs> Old man ran the bait shop and 
Eudora, Mississippi. Well, the sun's starting to fade now, so I'm just going to go for a little scout up over to this hill here. I saw a this is in a different direction. Just want to see what's over there before um, nightfall. I'll probably come back before it's dark this time. Um, just want to recon up over not too far from camp. So go and see what's over that other hill. And then uh, I might even have a sleep in in the morning. It's been quite a few early early starts. So I've got a big drive home tomorrow. So maybe uh, eggs and bacon on the barbecue is the agenda for the morning. I'll go and see what's out there. You're thinking, son, but the keepers and those pictures ain't the ones I'm holding, they're the ones I'm standing with. They're the kind you give your life for. Yeah, I'm standing you know in that place. He's, um, he's quite big bodied. Now, I think he's a young stag, he's only small ant ones. Wicked little spot there. Just come up on that little grassy feeder, look as well. He's only 180 from me. Massive bodied animal, but um, he's got quite big brows, which I thought was spikes. It's actually massive brows, but his rears are. Um, about as only as long as his brows, it's odd. Maybe he's really old. Tank of a tank of a body though, he stands out so much on that face there. I'll just pull out a little bit and see. Walking across there was no mistake. I thought it was a horse at first. I think he knows something up, he's scenting pretty hard. Another young stag there, just popped out, just below the other one. Similar size and age group I reckon. The third stag's just walked into the picture. Well, this is my final descent into camp. It's been a, um, an absolute adventure up here. I had a ball uh, just from the, the bush Harley stag to, to exploring new places and um, yeah, just all the recon I've done will certainly be the, um, the foundations for another trip. Might even, I found some good places to backpack into, so we'll definitely um, keep this one on the map for um, solid, some, some solid trips into the future. So guys, if you're, um, if you're liking the videos, thanks for your support. Um, please subscribe and, uh, and share them around. Remember, stay safe out there. Happy hunting. See you next time.